This will be the episode where I combine the rotational collision that I implemented earlier with the separating axis theorem with the help of the so-called collision manifold and at the end I will have various objects moving, colliding and rotating on the canvas. In the last episode I modified the ball, the wall, the box and the capsule classes so that they now ha all have the same properties and the same methods, sometimes even with the same values. And I often refer to them as body objects anyway, so it's time now to create a parent class for them, called body, and they will inherit their properties from that class. So I start writing that class above the ball class, which is the first body class in the code, set a default value for its properties that can be changed later by the child classes, and also create four empty methods, the draw, the display, the reposition, and the key control. And instead of storing the different bodies in different arrays, I will collect all of them in the same array called bodies, this here. So I create that one instead of these three. Then to actually make the ball class the child of the body class, I will need the extends body expression here. And on the top of the constructor, I will need to use the super keyword, which is used to access and call functions on an object's parent. Then I can delete most of the properties and I only leave the properties that I want to have a different value from the one I defined in the parent class. So here for now I can get rid of the position, the inertia, the elasticity, the velocities, the accelerations, the player and this push as well. Basically almost everything. And I'm going to do the same with the other three classes. I add the extends body expression, the super keyword in the constructor, and I delete the properties I don't want to redefine. In the wall class, I can also get rid of the key control and the reposition methods because I cannot control the wall objects with the keyboard. And then in the main loop below, I only need to iterate through one single array, the bodies I just created, and I can basically get rid of all of the previous iterations and start a for each loop on the bodies. I call the draw method, the key control, if the player is true, then I have a little space for the collision handling with the SAT. And finally the display method, which is empty at the moment for every object, and the reposition method. And I want to apply the separating axis theorem from every possible body pair. And I use a for loop for that and I copy the SAT embedded for loop that I have here below into the for each loop. And now these two capsule objects have been pushed into the bodies array at the moment they have been instantiated. So I think I don't need these. And if everything went fine, then things should work the same way as they did at the end of the last episode. Which is not the case. And I also don't have any error messages. So I need to check what I forgot myself. Okay, so I made a typo in the body class. One of the properties should be called angular velocity instead of this acceleration velocity or whatever I meant by that and now it's like it was before which is a good sign instead of these capsules I'm going to test for one of each bodies so I want to have a capsule a ball a box and a wall object and the player of the ball will be true and I check the canvas and it looks that I'm ready to apply the penetration resolution, the collision response function that I have already implemented before. And in the SAT function, I have already found the collision normal and the penetration depth. Those are the two variables I need for the penetration resolution. So I go to the main loop and I use the same method as last time. 
pushing away the two objects along the collision normal proportional to their inverse masses, so that the sum of these pushes equals the magnitude of the penetration depth. And I go to the canvas, and it looks like something's missing. The line class doesn't have a position property, although it should, since it's a shape. So I go and give one the central point between the two vertices. And this will hopefully make it work. And the penetration resolution is doing something, although here I can see that the ball is making jumps sometimes instead of getting pushed away. And the reason for that is that in the SAT I swap the axis direction so that it always points away from the collision vertex towards the other object's edge. But if I want to do a penetration resolution, the axis direction always needs to point towards the same object, regardless if its vertex is colliding or not. So I want the axis to always point towards the first object from the second object. And to decide that, I check if the maximal projection along the axis is larger for the first object than for the second object. And if not, then I swap the axis direction. Here I have already used that condition. And if it was true, then I swapped the axis already. And that means that if I did that, then I have to swap it again, so it goes back to the original position. And that happened when the vertex object was set to the second object, so I can use that as a condition here. And then I can be sure that if the first object's projection along the axis is larger than the second ones, then the axis will always point in towards the same direction. And I try the penetration resolution again. And now it seems to be working. So I will leave it like that and I move to the next step, which will be the collision response. To be able to apply the collision response, I need one more variable and that's the contact point. The SAT function already returns with a collision vertex vector and I can check here with the test circle function if the result looks acceptable. And it looks like it does, which means I'm ready to apply the collision response. But before I do that, I'm going to create a class that will be responsible for storing all the data I need to handle a collision, which are the two objects and the penetration depth, the collision normal and the contact point. A data structure like that is called collision manifold. It will have five properties. And later I will add two methods, which will be the penetration resolution and the collision response. And in every frame for every colliding object pairs, I will store an object of this class in an array, which I create here in the top. And I call it collisions. And I will iterate through this array as well in the main loop, just like I do with the bodies. And then at the start of the next frame, I will make this array empty just so that I can fill it up again during the next iteration through the bodies array. So yeah, this is how I make the array empty in the beginning of the main loop. And for every case when the SAT function doesn't return false, I will just push a new object of this collision class into the collisions array. So here are the five variables I need for a collision manifold and I push those data in this collisions array. First I put the iteration here right after the iteration to the bodies array and I will call the penetration resolution and the collision response methods for each element in the array. And then all I need to do is implement those methods inside of the call data class that I just created. I will start with the penetration resolution which is the same three lines that I have already used quite often. I just need to write it with different variable names. And as for the collision response, 
I use the same algorithm I did for the two colliding capsules because that algorithm can be applied for any other objects as well. It will work with boxes, walls and balls too because it's just the implementation of the physical laws of a two-dimensional collision. I copy and paste the code from the capsule capsule collision response function and I will need to be careful about rewriting the variable names because there is a lot of possibilities to go wrong here. But once I'm ready, I can try it out by calling this method in the main loop. Just a few little changes before I actually try it out. First of all, I delete this parentheses. And I give the arguments as default values for these properties of the collision manifold. I don't want to set them to zero. And I also rename the pen depth property to pen. Then I go to the body class and I set the default value for the elasticity to 0 instead of, no, to 1 instead of 0 so that I can see better if there is something wrong with the collision. And I also need to make some changes in the inertia property of the capsule and the box classes because I will need to call the length and the width properties of their components and not of the objects themselves. And one more change I need to make is here in the collision manifold, I call the normal, the penetration and the contact point, while down below, I put the penetration in front of the normal. So I just swap these two and then the collision manifold will get the proper variables and if I check the canvas I can see that it's not working good enough for some reason and to see what that reason is I go and take a look at how a game loop works here on this website this is an interesting article called build a simple 2d physics engine for javascript games and I will put a link to it in the description and it has this physics engine loop section saying that deciding the order of operations within the loop might seem simple, but it is not a trivial decision. So it's important where I put the collision handling part. The collision iteration needs to be right after the collision detection. And then I do the render, which is the draw method, jump to the user interaction, which is the key control method in my code, then positional logic, that's what I called reposition, and then calling the SAT again, which is the collision detection. So this is how my game loop should look like, but it's not how it looks right now, because the render and the positional logic are both in between the collision detection and the collision response. If I want to follow that game loop flowchart, then the render, the user interaction, and the positional logic which is the draw method, the key control method, and the reposition method, they need to follow each other directly. And so do the collision detection and the collision resolution. So I will need two for each loop to the bodies array. And I put the second one above the one that I already have. And that new one will have the render, the user interaction, the positional logic. And then after it's done, it will jump to the next for each loop which consists of the SAT function and the third step will be the iteration through the collisions array and this is how my game loop will look like instead. Then check the canvas again. Um, remember when I said that by rewriting the variable names in the collision response function I copied from the capsule capsule collision? There are a lot of possibilities to go wrong. I can show you here one of those possibilities. Here if I want to get the second collision arm, I need a vector that points to the contact point from the position of the second object's first component and not from the first one. And I hope that was the only mistake I made there. And the rotation seems to be working better now. And there is one final thing I would like to do in this episode, and that's creating a few random 
objects moving, colliding and rotating around the canvas without any friction. Step one, I draw four walls around the edges of the canvas. I copied these four lines from the episode 10 where I introduced the wall class because that's when I did this last time. Step two, I set the linear friction to zero here on the top and the angular friction will be one for the capsule and also one for the box class. And finally, I'm creating three capsule, three box and three ball objects and they will have random arguments at the instantiation. I'm creating a for loop with an iterator and depending on the modulo 3 of the iterator it will create a capsule, a box or a ball object using the random arguments I create in the first half of the for loop. And after I finish that for loop I go and delete the rest of the objects but I create a player ball that will be the one that I can control with the keys so I set the player value of that to true and it will be placed in the middle of the canvas and let's go to the canvas the ball is in the middle that's the one I can control and I just hit this capsule there and this is a nice demonstration of what the physics engine can do at this moment but I still have a lot of ideas what can I do with this so yeah I will keep working on this in the next episode.